The 2017 SR4U Soccer Cleat Awards is brought to you by IKEA. IKEA, put it together yourself. In honor of this partnership, IKEA would like to give out their own SR4U Boot Award, which is the most IKEA soccer cleat of 2017, which goes to the Umbro Medusa 2, for obvious reasons. Hello and welcome to the 2017 SR4U Boot Awards. My name is Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, but you probably already knew that. And in today's video, we're going to be highlighting some of the best, some of the worst, and some of the weirdest soccer cleats of the year. While this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways, any soccer cleat that came out or was relevant throughout the entire year of 2017 is eligible to win an SR4U Boot Award. Also keep in mind that all of these award selections are based on my own personal experiences with all of these products. You may agree, you may disagree, some of you may even get triggered to the point where you get so angry that you have to leave a really mean comment even though it's not really a personal shot at you or the soccer cleats you have, we just have different opinion so take it easy it's not that serious as always feel free to share some of your own picks for all of these different awards down below in the comment section and also if you have any opinions or questions leave that down below as well and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you to explain some of the picks that I've made if you'd like some clarification also if you guys do end up enjoying the video don't forget to support it with a like with all that out of the way let's get right into it the best lightweight soccer cleat of 2017 this award I feel is pretty self-explanatory. It goes to a shoe that is both lightweight, but also very good from a performance fit and overall comfort standpoint. And when you're talking about all those things, especially the lightweight aspect, I don't think that anything did it better in 2017 than the Nike Mercurial Vapor 11. Technically not brand new this year, but it was a very relevant model all year long. And it truly is the best of the best if you're looking for something that is super light mainly because it is actually the lightest shoe on the market right now, not to mention it's tight, it offers a very barefoot feel, it offers excellent traction, probably the most aggressive traction you can get from any firm ground stud pattern, not to mention that it is extremely responsive and really gives you this true one-to-one -one connection that you cannot get from any other shoe out there, or at least not the same experience that something like a Vapor 11 does have on offer. So if that's something that you value in a soccer cleat, the lightweight aspect of it, I really think the Vapor 11 is the way to go. The most unique soccer cleat of 2017. Now the winner of this award is obviously something that features a design that is unlike anything else currently available, but at the same time is also good. You can make a really unique design, but if it's not very good, then who really cares? And the winner of this award is pretty easy. It's the Puma Future 18.1. This is a shoe that, in my opinion, is just super unique. It's really difficult to compare it to anything else out there. Obviously, it's similar to other top-end shoes at the moment. In terms of overall weight, being at about the 7.5 seven ounce mark, it features knitted base to the upper as well. But the net fit system allowing you to basically create your own customized lacing system and therefore allowing you to kind of customize the fit and feel of the shoe to a certain extent, the lockdown, the width, the overall tightness, that's something that we've really never seen before on a soccer cleat. Is the Puma Future 18.1 perfect? No, but it is a legitimately good performer and a concept that I think Puma has a lot of potential to really work with and make that much better in years to come. So the most unique boot of 2017, I think, has to be the Puma Future 18.1. The Way to Not Screw It Up Award. Now this is an award that's all about not making change for the sake of change, something that we see so often in the modern soccer cleat market. You have a really good model and then the next one comes out and they change so much that it's pretty much a completely different shoe and everybody who really liked what the old one was about doesn't really like what the new one's about. So this award goes to the Adidas X17 Plus Pure Speed, which of course replaced the X16 Plus Pure Chaos in 2017. And I really thought the Pure Chaos was an awesome shoe. That was an all new design, super, super unique with the big lace cover, the internal tech fit system, the sprint frame construction, the soft material for the entire upper. And really the X17 Plus Pure Speed is more or less the exact same design. They tweak the synthetic ever so slightly to where it's just a little bit thinner and that much softer, which I really like. Reminds me of the old hybrid touch. They tweak the fit a little bit so it's slightly lower volume fit 
fits that much nicer as well. And that's about all they changed aside from the name, of course. And is that a bad thing? Some people would argue yes, some people would argue no, but in my opinion, this is Adidas' best boot at the moment, and they had such a good, unique design in the form of the X16 Plus Pure Chaos, they didn't need to make any kind of major changes to maintain a top-level performing soccer cleat. So that's why the Way to Not Screw It Up award goes to the X17 Plus Pure Speed. The most improved soccer cleat of 2017. Now you've probably heard the saying, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, this award is basically the opposite of that. This is talking about a model that we previously had that wasn't very good and then the new one came out and it's just way better, hugely improved. And for me, in 2017, without question, that award had to go to the Nike Hypervenom Phantom 3. I have the low cut variation here as an example. I personally prefer the low, but they do make a mid cut DF model as well, which I think is honestly equally as good, both of which are major improvements over the previous Phantom 2 and finish, which was basically the low cut version. And of course, the Phantom 2 and finish did see a second upper generation kind of halfway through its run, which did improve upon the original that most people, including myself, really didn't like, especially in comparison to the Phantom 1. But I think it is without question, first or second generation of the Phantom 2 upper, that the Phantom 3 is just a way better shoe. We saw the shoe transition from Nike skin to Flyknit, which I really like the Flyknit upper on this particular model. It's one of the best Flyknit uppers currently on the market, really one of the best knitted boots on the market. You could make that argument as well. It fits really good. I like the redesign to the sole plate and stud pattern. It's extremely comfortable, offers a really nice touch on the ball, super responsive as well. And in general, I just think it was one of the best boots of 2017 period, not just a big improvement over the previous Phantom 2. So for me, most improved of 2017, definitely the Hypervenom Phantom 3 from Nike. The most controversial soccer cleat of 2017. Now this award is basically the equivalent of going on a soccer related YouTube video and down below in the comments commenting CR7 is better than Messi or Messi is better than CR7. You're gonna get a lot of opposing opinions and a lot of people calling you an idiot because they simply do not agree. It's a controversial topic. And I think one release in 2017 was by far the most controversial. And of course, I'm talking about the return of the Adidas Predator. I have the Predator 18.1 here as an example. And I think what's funny about the controversy of this particular shoe is that the Predator 18.1 specifically, I actually think is a really, really good top end soccer cleat. I put it in my top 10 of 2017. But the reason why this is controversial is because it bears the Predator name. Basically what Adidas did, and everyone has their own opinion on this, is they killed off the Predator line, they introduced the Ace line as more or less the replacement, they evolved the Ace line, and then now have changed it back to the Predator. This Predator really could have been the Ace 18 rather than the Predator 18, but they chose to bring back the Predator name. So people who are big fans of the Ace line and really what Adidas has been doing as of late are perfectly happy with this being called and named a Predator. But the people who are longtime Predator fans who have fond memories of the Predators that had kangaroo leather uppers and the rubberized striking elements are not quite as happy with what Adidas has done with bringing back the Predator name. To them, even though this is an okay shoe by 2017 standards, it's not a true Predator, which is why this is such a controversial release. In my opinion, I don't really have an issue with them calling this a Predator, and honestly, I think that this is the right boot for them to release. And I don't think that a kangaroo leather upper would have been a good option in 2017 based on what's popular right now. A knitted upper like they've gone with, I think makes a lot more sense. But personally, I would have liked to have seen some kind of a rubberized grip element to the upper, a striking element, like we used to see on every other Predator model that has come out up until the Predator 18 generation. I think that would have tied it in a little bit more to what we've seen in the past, and it would have made this shoe that much more unique. Can I say it would have been better 100%? No, because I can't comment on a shoe that doesn't exist, but I think it's pretty clear to see why this was such a controversial boot this year. The What Were You Thinking Award. This goes to Under Armour because they put a zipper on a soccer cleat. Do I need to say more? <laughs> the best leather soccer cleat of 2017. Now I think it's safe to say that leather soccer cleats are dropping in overall popularity amongst the younger generation of consumers, at least the majority of them, which is why we're seeing less and less leather soccer cleats every single year. However, 
with there being fewer releases, I think this year we got one of the best leather soccer cleats of all time. So this award goes to the Nike Tiempo Legend 7, which is a shoe that I have been extremely impressed with. It replaces the Tiempo Legend 6, which I already thought was one of the best modern leather soccer cleats that we have ever seen, but this improves upon that design in pretty much every single way. It is drastically better, which is surprising because I thought the Legend 6 was pretty much as good as it gets. You get the kangaroo leather up or a good amount of it and the quality is also really good, so the softness and the touch you would expect from a more traditional shoe is definitely there but the internal support cage the fit mesh liner the fly wire cables the one piece construction with the fly knit through the middle as well as the fly knit construction through the heel all combine to create the softness and the comfort you would expect from a leather shoe but also the responsiveness that you would expect from a modern day soccer cleat in 2017 this is as responsive as just about anything out there which is extremely impressive considering the style of shoe that it is not to mention they're very comfortable and they completely rework the sole plate and stud pattern now making this extremely lightweight so you get all of the softness of the leather in a weight range that is about seven ounces in a size nine nine and a half us which again is just so impressive in terms of what they've incorporated all into one shoe and it doesn't feel like a mishmash of features it really does feel like a seamless piece a seamless construction on your feet so for me the best leather soccer cleat of 2017 without question was the legend 7. the best takedown model of 2017. Now, if you regularly watch my channel, you know that I'm a big believer in always considering all of your options when it comes to buying soccer cleats on a budget. And usually buying the low end takedown models at the full retail price is not gonna be the best bang for your buck in terms of the quality you can get. If you can find an older model or even an older colorway that's been marked down to meet your budget requirements of a higher end shoe, of course, that's always going to be the better value versus buying a takedown. However, this year we actually got some legitimately very good takedown models. So this award, goes to the Nike Hypervenom Felon 3, specifically the low cut variation of the shoe because it's cheaper. And I think that the cheaper you can get any of these takedown models, the better the value is. Not to mention that the mid cut variation, I just don't think offers a very good fit in the heel. This is just a much better version of the shoe period. It has a retail price of $80 US and it features a Nike skin upper as well as somewhat of a fly wire system. They're technically nylon cables rather than little kind of strings, but they're just as effective and essentially do the exact same job as they are attached directly to the lacing system and run into the base of the sole. This Nike Skin Upper is a mesh-based synthetic that was previously found on top and hypervenom models, specifically the Phantom 1 as well as the Phantom 2. Obviously the Phantom 3 is now flying it, but that doesn't take away from the quality of this synthetic material and usually at this particular price point, the synthetics are very cheap and very plasticky and while this isn't exactly the same or quite as good in terms of overall quality to what we have seen on previous top end hypervenom generations it's still absolutely fantastic considering the price point that this falls in and really i think if you're looking for a lower end takedown model with a synthetic upper and a tighter fit in general i really don't see how you could buy anything else other than the felon 3. the most overrated soccer cleat of 2017 now popularity would usually suggest that a soccer cleat is really, really good. But trust me when I say that there are plenty of products out there, not just soccer cleats that are extremely popular, but aren't necessarily the greatest option at their respective price point, or in this case of soccer cleats at the price point, as well as the type of soccer cleat that it is. You have other options out there, but because people go shopping and they only buy one pair of shoes and that's all they try for the whole year, they don't necessarily get to experience what the other options are, which I of course have, throughout this entire year. And for me, the one shoe that stood out to me as the most overrated of the year in terms of it being very popular, but in my opinion, not bad, but not the greatest for the money, that award goes to the Adidas Ace 17.1 Prime Knit. Now I know some of you who regularly watch the channel may have expected a laceless boot, a Pure Control, a Predator 18 Plus, a Nemesis 17 Plus, but honestly, I feel like the laceless thing has kind of worn off in terms of its overall popularity and hype to a certain extent. The people who want laceless are gonna buy it regardless of whether or not it's the best or not. And really, I don't think laceless shoes are the way to go. The reason why I picked the Ace 17.1 Prime Knit is because I just don't think that it's the best knitted upper that you could get in 2017. I think it was the least enjoyable of all the knitted uppers that I wore the entire year. The control skin you have through basically the back two thirds of the shoe, including the entire midfoot, 
feels fairly stiff and kind of plasticky, even though it's not a plastic base, but you do have this polyurethane top layer. And then the prime that you have at the front really just doesn't offer that great of a touch in general. I just wasn't a huge fan of this particular shoe. It fits perfectly fine. It's not uncomfortable by any means, but in terms of the experience of actually wearing them, if you're comparing this to something like a Nike Magista Obra 2, or even just other models from Adidas that aren't knitted, I just thought that they offered a better experience overall. These are popular because a lot of people like the way that they look. It does look a lot like a pure control. And again, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with them, but I'm just not crazy about the experience that they have on offer. If we compare this to the model that has just replaced it, the Predator 18, Point one with its prime knit upper it's so much softer so much more comfortable and the overall touch and experience of that shoe i think is much improved over the ace 17.1 so if you have this shoe and you really like it i would definitely recommend checking out that predator 18.1 because i really do think it's a heck of a lot better the most underrated soccer cleat of 2017 now, usually when really good products fly under the radar, especially when you're talking about soccer cleats, it's for one main reason. They don't come from one of the more popular brands. If it's not Nike, Adidas, or Puma, people are unwilling to try. But for 2017, there was one shoe that really stood out to me as being extremely underrated. People did not consider this shoe all year long. It was the Under Armour Clutch Fit Force 3.0. These are legitimately in my top five best of 2017. I'm a huge fan of this particular shoe and a lot of that has to do with the clutch fit upper. The upper is extremely unique in that it's elasticated and as you tie them up, it kind of stretches around your foot. So usually with a soccer cleat, you kind of have to wait for the shoes to adjust to your feet, kind of stretch and form, but these do that basically as you're tying them up. It's an extremely unique sensation and the fit and general comfort you can get out of this shoe is really unparalleled. There is nothing else like it out there. Plus the upper offers a really nice touch. It's extremely comfortable out of the box. Pretty much no break in time required because of the stretchiness of the upper. Not to mention it is remarkably responsive all things considered, the build quality is really good. And because it isn't the most popular, especially if you're buying online, you can find these things deeply discounted well below the normal $220 retail price. So if you really wanna get a pair of these, it's due to be replaced anytime. You can find some really good discounts on a couple different colors. I'd recommend picking them up if you're looking to try something different. The least interesting soccer cleat of 2017. Now this is obviously not an award that you would want to win, but basically this is the one shoe this year that I thought was just extremely underwhelming in terms of everyone's overall excitement level and the popularity of the shoe, of course. And of course, I'm talking about the Puma 117.1. This is a shoe that I was kind of a little bit excited about in terms of trying them, although I didn't think that it was a great idea for Puma to release something like this in 2017, something with a leather upper as their flagship just isn't going to fly these days. I'm not sure that too many people were anticipating the release of this shoe. And then once I actually got the chance to try them out, I was extremely underwhelmed. The quality of the leather, not that great. The fit of the shoe, not that great. Are they really light? No, they're not that light. Are they that good looking? No, I don't think it's the most good looking shoe. It really didn't have a lot going for it, which is why I just thought it was one of the least interesting shoes of 2017. I don't really see a reason why you would buy a Puma 117.1 at the full retail price, especially when it first came out, when the hype should be at its peak. But really, there was never really any hype around this shoe at all. That is it for part one of the SR4U Boot Awards. If you want to continue watching and see part two, where I ultimately announce the best soccer cleat of 2017, you can click the little pop-up in the corner of the screen or the end screen annotation that'll pop up at the end of this video. It'll also be linked in the description below. If you have any questions regarding any of my choices in today's video, feel free to leave those comments and questions down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to support it with a like. And if you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear as we move into 2018, a new and exciting year for soccer cleats. All my social media information is linked in the description as well, so follow me there if you don't already. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in part two.